Hello, my name is Bara and I will present a paper called the Girl-Friendly Computer Science Classroom. Um, this one comes from the gender diversity track, so it's a different uh, view on the education, but it, it is about education, about building um, education programs uh, that help with retention and recruitment of girls into computer science and software architecture as well. Uh, I'm a computer, sci uh, computer architecture person, but six years ago I have co-funded a nonprofit organization called Chiquitas, within which um, we have actually gathered 500 volunteers teaching computer science uh, to girls and women. Uh, so far it's been over 15,000 uh, of them that we influenced in some way. So we've gathered lots of experience uh, about how a computer classroom should look like so that we do not lose girls unnecessarily at the beginning of the education. To explain this concept a little, I uh, would like to use this just uh, one slide to understand that uh, there are certain uh, differences in the tendencies that are more visible with girls and uh, with boys. Uh, of course, you always have individuals on both tails, so we don't want to stereotype. But at the same time, it's actually good to realize that um, diversity is really beneficial in teams uh, because it brings, uh, it is likely to bring different expertise and uh, strengths to the table. So in, in this picture, I wanted to um, show you one specific example uh, that is problem solving strategy. So um, the literature actually suggests that um, for a problem solving strategy among boys, it's more typical to um, make compartments of the, of the problems, to divide the problem into parts and uh, solve each part in isolation. While what is more typical with, with girls is to actually create a map of the problem space first. And then when this map is, is, is built and understood, then start building the problem solution just in parallel upon this uh, context map. So girls tend to create like more complex patterns and um, more like more integrative solutions. Um, that's also why they, they have a higher tendency to uh, be multidisciplinary in, in, uh, when, when being in computing. Uh, this is important because um, this are actually uh, exactly the individuals, like when you, when you look here, these are the individuals that we would like to see in software architecture community because these are the individuals that have the high perspective, uh, can, can integrate different fields and, and, and domains. Uh, but an argument I want to make in, in this talk is that we are often losing these people exactly uh, because these people when actually starting the education they are really creating a map of their space and by that they are very slow they have very very flat learning curve at the beginning before they start really progressing and achieving some results and that is a time where uh, they find themselves mixed um, with more experienced learners in the classroom where it's difficult to just keep up and uh, so we often lose them. Uh, in, this, in, this, in this work we uh, wanted to actually look at uh, creating environment for novice learners um, who would uh, be supported to stay in the field and actually reach these later phases of their, of their learning curve and join uh, the field, join our community, specifically social architecture, of course. Um, in, the, in the work, in the in paper uh, that is being presented, uh, what we did is that uh, we uh, collected recommendations from literature from, from this perspective. So what we can do about the learning environment for novice learners in computer science, and then also collected experience from Chiquitas. So we actually ran multiple workshops uh, where we did panel discussions and interviews with our experienced tutors and we are collecting some, some recommendations uh, of practices that could be used to create this, this environment. So we divided this into uh, these categories. So um, some of them focus on the safe environment as such and sense of belonging basically. Uh, some of them at like segregation, so creating groups of uh, learners, uh, then working in teams uh, and personalized learning. 
So we'll look at them one by one and I will present some of the highlights. I will not have time for everything, but I hope that uh, you will have time to read the paper. So when we look at creating safe environment, uh, what the literature says is that um, actually the feeling like feeling uh, that you belong and feeling that uh, the, the environment is like accepting you as one of the crucial factors that decide about uh, retention of girls in uh, computing education. Um, this is why it's actually very important that uh, such a safe environment is, is um, getting some attention. Uh, the literature is also saying about the environment being non-competitive uh, and about working with the failure as a friend and not as a factor that would um, um, actually navigate the girls out from, from computing. Uh, because really they need more time at, at, at the beginning. Um, first for the reason of being uh, like really like later technology adopters, boys tend to start a technology earlier. And then also by having this different uh, problem solving strategy and uh, needing more time at the beginning to actually create their, uh, create their background and context map. Um, on the right side, you see some experience from uh, the interviews. Uh, so what we've seen is that uh, the lecturers talk about a uh, huge importance of the informal environment. Uh, so really like helping uh, the students to get to know each other, to create community spirit, because uh, this then uh, increases the commitment and engagement. Uh, what is very important is this um, bullet point that is saying uh, something that we have on the walls of our uh, lecture rooms. So it's saying that the only bad question is the question not asked because we want to really like open this um, environment for asking many questions and accepting that I might fail, but this is a way of learning. We also engaged lots in like fun activities and very, very informal atmosphere. Uh, when you look at the segregation, yeah, so uh, the literature is actually uh, saying that it's good to do some segregation, but there is not agreement on whether to segregate by gender or rather by experience. Uh, typically, people are saying that it's better by experience, but there are some, some works uh, also recommended segregation by, by gender. Uh, the most important benefit actually to uh, put just the girls or just the novice learners together is uh, the experience of success. Because in a mixed environment, it's very difficult to experience success. And without that, it's, it's, it's very unlikely that the people, the individuals will um, put some more effort to continue to stay in the, uh, to stay in, uh, in, in, in the field in, in computing. Uh, with an experience from Chiquitas, uh, what we see is that uh, the girl only environments work really well. Um, but at the same time, they should be, there should be a plan to integrate uh, these girls into the mixed environments later on. So really predicting this learning curve as a curve as, as like very flat and then, then rising and finding the right moment to actually integrate um, the girls into the mixed environment uh, again. Uh, and then uh, from the uh, last group, I would like to uh, present shortly, I would say this is the most important one. It's about personalized learning, um, where when you look into the literature, it, it mostly speaks about a limiting frustration. So in the environment, uh, the teacher typically wants to uh, have enough time for the more experienced, uh, more experienced students in a classroom and that's why those who are less experienced uh, typically feel frustrated because uh, when they are lost they do not get any any help uh, at the same time they do not really feel encouraged um, and we see that for girls specifically it's very important to really feel encouragement from the environment that's also visible from the questionnaire studies we've run um, in Chiquitas, we've introduced something we call the sticky note method. This sticky note method is actually used for monitoring progress within the classroom so that we really see like how well um, each individual is doing. And we have assistant mentors who are helping individually those who are slower or faster than the others. Um, 
We also advise the lecturers to have points in the education program, which we called Inclusing Restart. So even the learner who just got lost uh, can resume and continue with the group. So um, these are some of the insights we have. Um, that, that's it for this presentation. Um, I will be very happy to answer any questions. Uh, there is much more in the paper, so please uh, use, use this opportunity and, and read the paper and come back to me if you have any questions also uh, outside this conference. Thank you very much.